Hey, it's Joel. Next to me is Danielle, a 19-year-old wonder person who has put together a Steam-friendly $18.95 kit that gives access to robotics and electronics for kids that might not otherwise have access to it. She's mm -hmm. gonna break it down and tell us all about it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. Uh, hey, Danielle. Hey, Joel. You are on a whirlwind tour because yes. of all of this, right? Yes. Where do you call home? I call home Troy, Michigan. And that's with the hand where you have to point, yeah, it, yeah. which is one of those. Okay. Near Canada. Near Canada, that's yeah. all you have to say. Mm -hmm. This is interesting because when it was first explained to me by our friend Kirby, mm -hmm. uh, I was like, wow, a, an electronics and robotics kit aimed at STEAM education yeah. and for under 20 bucks. Yeah. Where did you come up with this idea? So I saw a lot of educational robotics kits and was really inspired um, to use them in my classroom because uh, it's really great because you can have it in a project-based way to teach electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and computer science. But a lot of the robots cost an upward of four hundred, five hundred dollars, and a robots lot, aren't cheap. yeah, a lot of my students can't purchase that. I myself can't purchase that. <laughs> so I decided to create a robot that costs less than twenty dollars and goes to kids for free. That's th this is amazing because it's using parts that even I recognize, mm -hmm. uh, and it, the kids then get the chance to do electronics, yeah. and make something that uh, is a robot, yeah. and they get to program it, right? Yep. How does that work? Uh, so first off, they uh, learn how to read an electrical diagram and actually wire the robot with the ESP32 development board, the motor controller, and the breadboard. And then they program the ESP32 development board with Arduino IDE, mm -hmm. which is free and open source, and it's Java, C, and C++. Well, people know the Arduino IDE because when I did my, my Daft Punk helmet, uh -huh. right, and I did all those, yeah. I used the Arduino IDE to do mm -hmm. the programming for yeah. it. So, I have a little bit of experience, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I would assume the kids can probably pick it up pretty quick. Yeah, and there's also drag and drop options for the ESP32, which is perfect for the little ones. <sighs> That's like cheating. Uh, for the little ones, it's not cheating <laughs> no, for the little no, ones. No, no, for the adults, it's cheating. It is cheating for the adults. That's true. Drag and drop. Oh, gosh. That is amazing. Okay, so let's break down the parts that are here. Okay. And uh, what's really cool is obviously you're using 3D printing as well. Oh, yes, of course. So then we'll go through what you affectionately call the robot guts. Yes, robot guts. And then we'll go over the 3D printed parts. Okay. okay. So these are what right here? DC motors. And uh, the yellow case is gears? Uh, it's the gearbox, okay. and it's, I don't know why they chose yellow, but they did, and here it is. It's very obvious. And you, this is from who? Uh, this, these are from Amazon, I believe. Okay. Normally I'll buy them from Adafruit. It, this is their standard color. Sometimes you can get them soldered or not soldered. I like the soldered ones just for time saving. We're talking about soldered being that the leads here are soldered? Yes, soldered okay. right onto the tabs right here. Oh, perfect. And they connect right into the motor controller, which is awesome because one motor controller controls two of these motors. So it cuts down on cost significantly. Oh, and the motor yeah. controller allows two motors, meaning independent control. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And this is from Adafruit. And it's really nice. It's about $4.65. That's not bad. Yeah, it's really not bad. Um, when the robot costs less than $20, it is a little bad. <laughs> but, And then I get my ESP32 development boards online and uh, overseas. And usually they'll cost like less than $3, which is pretty good. That is really good. Yeah, and I use it for a ton of different projects in the classroom, even more than just every kid gets a robot. I would imagine these come in handy for just tinkering and playing around yeah. and experimenting. Mm -hmm. I've, I have quite a collection. I was going to say, yeah. how, many, how many have you burned out? Uh, I So usually they come burned out. And I'll burn myself on them when I plug them into my computer. And I won't have done anything to it or sent too high of a voltage. I'll just plug it into the computer, and it's just a faulty board. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, so I've never actually burned one of these out. I've burned many motor controllers out, <laughs> like quite a few. Uh, but overall, it's pretty sustainable and good for the kids. It's rather undestructible, except for the motor controller. So I always have extra on hand. That's good. Yeah. And then uh, a nine volt battery. We all yep. know about nine those. Nine volt battery. Uh, and this one actually has some leads on it. Yep. Some screws and hardware. Yes. And 3D printable parts. Yes. Right? It has four 3D printed parts. This is the chassis. Uh, this is where the 9 volt battery goes. Can I hold that? Yeah, of course. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so cool. a QR code or a logo can go right here, or decorations. The kids go ham with the decorations. Uh, the motor well, actually, you have a 
A sticker, yeah. Look at that. I'm, I just sent 150 robots to kids for free all around the United States, these robots, and I sent them all sticker packs that were customized to what I thought they would like. So I drew little characters and little oh, robots, perfect. and this is my logo as well. Uh, it's a wonderful logo. Thank you. And then the ESP32 development board just clicks right in here. You can okay. screw it in. I usually put like two screws in uh, just to hold it in place. The DC motors go right here. The leads go through the bottom right here and up into the breadboard. And then the back wheel goes right here and the front wheels go right here. I love it. Yeah. This was made in what program? Uh, SolidWorks Education Edition. How hard was that to do? Uh, I've been using SolidWorks for a while now, so it was more just trial and error because when I first designed it, I didn't have a 3D printer. And so, oh, really? yeah, so the trial and error process was <laughs> a little difficult because I didn't, it was kind of designing blind. I wasn't able to see what I was creating originally physically in my hand for a few months until after I designed it. But once you could though, it, it really was, changed the game, didn't oh, it? Oh yeah, I was so excited. And it, there was many horror stories when I first prototyped it. <laughs> I bought, the ESP32s come in two different sizes, a 19 pin board and then a 15 pin. And I bought the one that was too large and I had to prototype it that day for a class I was doing uh, because I try to prototype new things with my students. And so I put it into the chassis, it didn't fit, so I soldered out the basin, so I have a really burnt, warped, sad chassis. Just, I keep it, you know, to show, Absolutely. you know, learning, but <laughs> it was a sad day. What is the difference between the 19 pin ESP32 and the 15 pin? There's just more outputs. Oh. Uh, I didn't need all of those outputs for these functions, so Makes I decided sense. to keep it to this board. This is the rear wheel, correct? Yes. And it's yep. just a nice hexagonal pattern. Yep. And the two front wheels, mm -hmm. actually, I remember, because you sent me these CAD files. I did, yeah. And uh, I printed some. Mm. Oh, so pretty. There you go, have one of those, look at that. So I used, being that the, the spirit of this is mm -hmm. low cost, Yes. Um, I used a, a filament from my friend Dave at Printed Solid. Uh -huh. He named it after his dog, and he calls it Jesse PLA. I love that. And, it, and he's got a bunch of different colors, but the reason I used it is because mm -hmm. he's trying to offer a, a low cost, high quality filament. Yeah. And so if people are ordering these kits or putting these together, I, I think this is a great option yeah. for them to, to try to get to. Similar but goals and mission too. I think so. And you know, Dave likes people who learn. Mm -hmm. And he likes electronics, and he likes lasers too. So that's kind lasers of lasers are great. So he would agree, and I do as well. But uh, I printed the front wheels, Daniel. Beautiful. So I these love are it. I, I contributed to this project. Yes, yes, you did. We get to put it together now, right? Yeah, we do. I'm going to guide you through the assembly process. Oh my goodness. Okay. Do I have to do any soldering, or are we just going to use these easy? I easy wires? soldered, and I already assembled the robot guts and made sure that everything worked. Because when you're traveling with electronics, sometimes things get a little wonky. So I am excited. Let's do it. What is the first step? We're going to each put three rubber bands on a wheel. Oh. There and you know. the rubber bands are a great way to have affordable traction. And it's easy, easily customizable too, like regarding color, and you can buy them in bulk, and you don't have to hurt the environment too much. <laughs> well, I would imagine, especially within the 3D printing world, people could, uh, people could use a flexible filament yeah. to, to be able to provide traction. Yep. The goal is creativity, but within kind of a, a, a budget, right? Uh, creativity and accessibility, yeah. so that everyone can do it. You're much better at it than me. I've got three rubber bands. <laughs> I have done bands. hundreds and hundreds. I was going to say, you're way more experienced yes. at this than I am. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the motors on. Oh. So we are going to put the leads facing this way. And we're going to use a machine screw. And we're going to put it through the bottom hole and line it up and then screw it through. Okay. So uh, that this, one right there? Yep. So when you were catting up these designs, yeah. I, I'm guessing that you had um, you, you had to take into account the size of the screws that you wanted to use and then the holes that you wanted yes, in the sure. parts? Yes, for sure. I was using screws that I already had at home from kits that I had already had experience with, like kits that my parents had bought me for Christmas or things like that. And I was like, I know how to use this screw. This will work. When you're bringing this to kids, um, mm -hmm. we're talking about uh, kids that might not otherwise have the opportunity yeah. to do this. So how many of these kids have 
screwdrivers, I guess, in their school. Many or, of them don't, which is why I come and teach the classes and provide resources to make the robot happen. And then I have an autonomous-ish code, ish because there's no sensors on it, uh, at least for the starting out point, so that the kids can still run the robot even if they don't have a computer at home. Oh, this is great. So if you go to a, a learning or a learning facility mm -hmm. and you have a kid who might have a screwdriver or tools yeah. or might have a computer, then yeah. they can do more with this. Right. But initially, you can take this anywhere and it'll right. run yeah. autonomous. Just right away. That's so These cool. are already pre programmed. I tried to make it as simple as possible. Thanks, because that made it so I could do this. How did I do? You did really well. Yeah. What is next? All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the motor controller onto the chassis. We're going to take the screwdriver and flip it over. Unfortunately, I grabbed the wrong screws when I was ordering in bulk, so these are slotted head screws. Okay. I remember uh, back when, when I was younger and had tools, there was a Phillips drive uh -huh. and flathead. Yeah. Do we still call it flathead? I, honestly, in most of the classes I've had, it's slotted head. Which, really? Yeah, and in the books, too, it says slotted head. Interesting. My dad corrects me all the time. He's like, that's not how it goes. And I'm like, that is how it goes. I mean, I will call it a, a slotted head screwdriver. No one will know what you're talking about. No one about. will know. No, not at all. So this screws right into these two holes. Oh, I see. Yep. Got it. I lined it up, kind of, for you. You, you sort of did, and I appreciate that. So with the, this is the motor controller, correct? Yes, yeah. With the motor controller having bits on the other side, is it okay to clamp it down under the plastic all the way? I've had no issue. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Ever, it's worked perfectly fine. I know some people might have like a standoff. There, I have right? put it through much trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> and much, much pain has been put on the, these motor controllers. And I know what breaks it and what doesn't. I would imagine the kids you teach probably have found out too. Uh, yeah, uh, we found out many different things, like what Sharpie looks like on my new laptop <laughs> and things like that. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the back wheel on. Okay. So That's we right, have- That's right, because this is a trike design, right? Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the nylon screw through. We're going to put two of these silver washers on. We're going to put the wheel on and then two more silver washers. Okay. And then the nut. It's funny because when kids do it, they have no trouble at all. I'm sure. As soon as an adult does it, tears occur. I guess. I've we'll had see. many people say, why? You need to make it click on or do something. And I'm like, ah. My, my big meat fingers just. Uh, well, if you need help, I'm here. I appreciate that, but I'm going to attempt to do this. Okay. I got the first two on. Yep. I would imagine that's the easy part. Usually tilting it on its side helps a lot. I'm sure. Oh yeah, look at that. <sighs> You're doing way better than most. Really? Yeah. I remember someone uh, giving an iPhone to a, a baby. Yeah. And the the unlock the unlock motion, right? Uh -huh. so the baby just got it, and it was like it, it was intuitive. And so I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if your design actually lends itself to being more intuitive to mm -hmm. new people who are learning. Like I'm wondering mm -hmm. if this way of assembling just makes sense without uh, tutelage. I think designing it when I haven't, I first designed it when I was taking my gap year. I hadn't taken any college classes in engineering yet. So a lot of the engineering, uh, you know, process I was learning was on my own. So I think a lot of it is intuitive. That's a great way to do it. Yeah, and then I'll go through college and all that will be gone. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I did that. Look at that. Looks good. I assembled it as well as a child. Yes. Which is an accomplishment. It is. The children are brilliant. I know. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put these wheels on. Oh, OK. And that's usually good to do between two people. The kids actually like it. They like holding each other's robots. I think that's fun. So which part do you want me to do? I will hold it, and you can put the washers on. So I will pour these little guys Just out. Spill the parts. Yep, we're going to put two large silver washers onto the motor shaft. One and two. And then we're going to put the wheel on. Just like that. Oh, and it's slotted. So yes, that... yep. Otherwise, it would just spin. It would. And then two more washers. OK. Yep, and I have different washer sizes because, or not different washer sizes, but different washer amounts because I have different types of wheels. Uh, a lot of the kids will design really cool and creative wheels. Yep, a black washer. Okay. And like these right here. These are thicker wheels. They're not attached. Oh, I see. But they're thicker, and so they hmm. you only need one washer for this. That makes sense. Yeah. So then we're going to take this baby screw and we're going to wow, screw super it. tiny. It is super tiny. Okay, maybe this is when my screwdriver will work well. Yeah. Hey, look at that. And then just screw it until it gets it, like, yep, that's perfect. See? And then now you can just 
set it on its side. I feel, I feel mighty accomplished right now. You are accomplished. I appreciate that. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a breadboard base. Oh, I like bread. Wait, actually, I think we'll do the ESP first. Okay. And this is a little hard because I already connected everything to make sure it works. And, and we can leave it that way. That's totally okay. Oh, well, we have to put it in the slots with the connectors going through. Oh, so we have to take it out. We do have to take it out. Okay. I had to test to make sure the motor controller worked. So what do we do here? We put the ESP32 along the slots. Yes, right? and it just fits right in. And then, oh, look at that, and you can see all the pins right there. Yeah, and we're going to stick two screws in just so it doesn't slide around. That's better than having to hold it, right? Yes. Which screws? Here we go. These guys. Uh, ah, so I can use, but that's a, oh, that's. Haha. -ha. Ace hardware. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one. And normally I just put it on the, one side. The back or the front? Or normally the... I just do it on like this side here. It's just to, you know, have it stay on. Yeah. And how far do I go on this one? You can go the whole way until it stops. Okay. Yep. Just the buttons can be a little bit difficult because they're right to the edge yeah. of where the hole is. Yeah. So the, now that it's secured though, we can flip it over. We can flip it upside down. There we go. And there's yes. all the pins. Yep. And we're going to take all of the pins from here. So this is our uh, motor controller and we have some duct tape going on here. Of course. I mean, yeah, duct tape is amazing. And we're going to just poke it through the oh, hole. Oh, I see. There's a designed hole yeah. in the model. Right. Okay. And so that way you can shove everything through, or at least you should be able to. And then the, the breadboard usually goes right about here. And we're going to put this guy and this guy through the hole, too. The one with the duct tape. The one with the duct tape, yeah. I was slipping off of its um, pin earlier. So I've got a picture here. Yes. And it looks like uh, purple green is first up. I always do the same color connectors right. for all of my classes because the kids, when you're trying to teach electrical engineering and you use different colors, things go wrong. Oh, sure. Absolutely. My, my dad is actually an electrical engineer, and he's colorblind. Oh, no. Yeah, but he can wire this robot with no trouble. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm jealous of that ability. Then. You seem to be doing an okay job. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these two guys, mm -hmm. and we're going to connect them to the motors. Oh. Yep, and Got it doesn't it. matter which direction, because you test it, see what direction it goes in, and just switch it. <laughs> Well, I've, I'm going to put red to red, just because that seems like a good idea. And, I did as well. And then I'll go black to gray. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to make the breadboard base. So I like to reuse the part from the ESP32 packaging to make my breadboard base. Oh, just some packing foam. Yeah. But why buy new stuff when you already have it? That's right. So Part of making is repurposing. That is true. So I cut it into two little strips, and I take the breadboard base and you know what's awesome about this breadboard it's sticky <laughs> the kids love it and it's That's actually perfect. it's less expensive than a lar or than a smaller breadboard oh really yeah uh, because I think they just make so many of them makes sense oh you're using foam as a standoff I am that's amazing yeah and it's perfect for the kids too and then what I do is I take my little rolls of duct tape you can see my duct tape has gone through it lately it has been traveling all around the United States. <laughs> And then you make little duct tape rolled feet. Yes. To go. And it goes right there. Yeah. Oh. It fits perfectly. I was going to say, you know, in, in further revisions, mm -hmm. when you modify the, the, the CAD file, you yeah. could technically 3D print standoffs for that. I could, but it makes it a lot easier for the kids. Well, plus the kids get to play with foam. You right. teach repurposing and you get to use duct tape. Duct tape makes it all worth it. And then you just tuck the connectors right underneath. This is this is so fantastic. Thank you. And what it's what's really cool is I know that okay, so the the prints aren't necessarily perfect and the right. wiring is kind of having to be shoved through yeah. things and we're using <laughs> packing foam as a standoff right. and duct tape. But what's great is this is so inspiring mm -hmm. for kids. Yeah, and they get to decorate it how they want to. That's so cool. And I mean it costs less than $20. You can't beat that. But the kids have turned it into like little Viking creatures. Uh, one uh, student turned it into a bear, and they make literal foam animals, and they put it in this extra space in the breadboard if they're not adding oh, sensors. Oh, that's a great idea. And they make entire decorations. I had a student put like fruit here, like a foam, and make it look like fruit. And okay. A I was water. Like, real fruit? <laughs> no, really? not wow. real. Not real fruit, thankfully. I wouldn't be surprised though. Uh, you know, hey. And do what you gotta do. Using the foam to make a design, so it's really cool. And often I will paint the motors too. So like, 
this right here. Oh, I see. Yeah. And if you paint the motors, it looks a lot more elegant. <laughs> sure, but I mean, as a base, I think this looks great. Plus, mm -hmm. with when when the kids have access to the CAD files themselves, right. they could design add-ons or coverings and or whatever. And many they want. of my students do, which is amazing. I've had students design a recycle bot. I'm putting tape in here so that it stays. Um, a design a recycle bot. Many different cool things, and it's really amazing to see what they come up with. So I'm going to briefly check my wiring diagram and make sure <laughs> that it is done correctly because as I said the redesign is a little wonky. Uh, funny thing, wiring diagrams. I took electronics class in high school Okay. and uh, I used to be able to read the uh, the color bands on resistors. Really? I remember those I numbers. have a shirt that says resist and it has a resistor. I got it from the same place that I got this shirt. Which shirt is that? It's Aww. a robot and cat. Perfect. I love robots and I love cats. You know what? What? You're the 3D printing community is essentially robots and cats. I mean, that's why I love it. Uh-oh, right. okay, are they in there enough? Yeah, see? Oh, it just did something. So it's spinning. <laughs> so it's spinning right now, which means that one of them was put on incorrectly, which it's super easy, just switch it. Sure, but we also, we matched colors. Yes. All right, here we go. Ah. Whoa. And I made it super slow so that, because the kids were running into each other on purpose. And it makes some, a large rotation. Basically. It does. Mm -hmm. Oh, it just turns so real it makes, quick. It makes a big, like it goes dun, 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 and it loops. But our table is not big enough. No, this is not big enough to hold right, this. Right, and then it has a vertical slide switch in it, which makes it really easy. I'm gonna loosen the wheels just a tad because that should make it go slightly faster. If you tighten it too much, it can have many mistakes. Oh. I, I one time was crying to my dad. I was like, the robot, I was teaching in class. I'm like, see, there it is. Whoa. Uh, to my dad, I was like, the robot, it's not working. I don't know why. I'm like, is it the code? And he's like, Danielle, code is consistent among robots. And I was like, you're right. And it, it was because it was tightened too That's much. a t-shirt right there. Yeah. Code is consistent among robots. <laughs> that is true. And we made it work. In hey, a, and I in, helped. In a short period of time too. That was super short. Ooh, yeah. On brand too. Well, this is great. Okay, so to recap, we used, let's see if I can remember, it's got an ESP32. Yes. And you're using the Arduino IDE to yep. program it. Yes. That connects up to a motor controller. Mm hmm. This and little guy right there. That little here. guy right there. Yep. Which controls these two motors. Yep. With gearboxes. Yep. And then the 9 volt goes into here. It goes into the breadboard. It goes into the breadboard, yes. which is on foam standoffs, yep. using duct tape to hold it in place. Which makes it even better. And all the all the parts that all this sits on are all 3D printed. Yes. Uh, you contributed with the white parts. I used Dave's Jesse. And PLA. the prints look fantastic. Oh, thanks. I figured. I thought this was a nice, cool orange. I think it would. It, it would looks go great well. with the white too. I think so. Yeah, and often I will put a QR code right here or my logo but sometimes the kids want to decorate all over it or they want to paint it, so I leave that space there. Well, this is fantastic. You know, I just want to, I want to shout something out here because uh, my buddy Chuck Hellebuck of Film It Friday, mm -hmm. Chuck loves electronics projects, Chuck loves 3D printing. Chuck, I challenge you to get one of Danielle's robot kits, print the parts, put it together, and then post it on social media. That would be really awesome. I think so. Well, yeah. uh, we've got a working robot here. Mm -hmm. The floor is yours. Tell everyone out there how they might find out more information about this wonderful project that you have. So you can learn more about myself and my organization, The Steam Connection, at www.steamconnection.org. Three W's. Did I say how many W's? You only had two. I only had two W's? Okay, www.steamconnection.org, where you can find more information about how you can bring these robots into your school, your organization, or even your home. And you can also find information on how you can make kits on your own, which is awesome. And I have access to the CADs, I have access to the bill of materials, everything like that. And I also have a series of children's books that I self-published, and they're free. And I have access to those as well. So I have resources about classes that I teach, online classes that I teach. I have a blog where I teach you how to solder with your student. I have uh, everything. 
and I also have the children's books. So this is fantastic. Yeah, I want I want it to be as comprehensive as possible in providing accessible, affordable, and diverse STEAM education for children. Bam! That's it right yes, there. The, everything oh, all at once. That is amazing. Here's what's really great. I remember being 19 and not having as nearly as much drive or purpose. You've done a <laughs> you've done a wonderful job so far and the, your future is extremely bright. This, oh, is, yeah. this is cool stuff. It, it made me very interested in studying biorobotics and I would love to study uh, like de-droning, uh, so safety in regards to like where drones can fly and where they can't. And also I got a lot more interest in a mountain goat research and making robots that can climb up steep surfaces. So because of these robots, I was like, oh, I love mechanical and electrical engineering, which is why I'm double majoring in it. Of course. And then I want to go <laughs> on to research cool, crazy robots. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm so glad that we got to meet. A big thanks mm -hmm. to Kirby for introducing yeah. us. Uh, and honestly, if you made it this far in the episode, you're awesome. Don't forget to go to the link in the description to learn more about this mm -hmm. and follow Danielle on social media. She is wonderful. I, I'm willing to bet you're going to see a lot more of her in the near future. Hopefully. Uh, don't forget to hug each other more. Love you all. As always, high five. Bam. He nailed it. Yay.